guys, welcome back to um, type seven of the Enneagram uh, CEU. And yeah, just as usual, the notes are below the video and there also is the link so you can take the Enneagram test. So we'll go ahead and just dig right into the Enneagram seven. The Enneagram seven is the enthusiast and the Bible figure that we're gonna talk about with it is King Solomon. And the Bible reference that we're gonna to refer to today is John 15, 11. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. And then as we've been doing for all the other Enneagrams, our purpose is just to better understand the enthusiasts, their strengths, weaknesses, and communication styles. So. Um, I wore my Pikes Peak Colorado shirt today um, to represent the enthusiasts. It's actually my second highest number, so woo, go enthusiasts. And Jason is one too, so we're, we really love it. But um, I wore my Pikes Peak shirt because one of the biggest, uh, probably enthusiast things I've ever done is the incline in Colorado Springs, which is just a bunch of stairs straight up the mountain and it was not fun but i did it and it was good to do something that was fun and just an adventure and someone told me that they dared me to do it so i gotta do it right so i don't know if i'll ever do it again but it was a fun thing so i'm representing um the seven inside of me with the pikes peak colorado shirt today so all right, so the Enneagram type seven is called the enthusiast. And they are described as entertaining, accomplished, and inhibited, hmm, could not talk today, and sometimes can be manic. So um, the enthusiasts are those high energy people, the people that are kind of the life of the party. They're the ones that um, kind of um, bring joy into a situation, the positive thinkers, the ones that uh, really are up for any adventure, um, the ones that can kind of get bored easily and then want to do something new and um, are always up for a good time. So those are kind of the enthusiasts. Um, but the besetting sin is that sometimes they can struggle with is gluttony and just always wanting more and always wanting um, kind of not to get bored. And so that's kind of their goal is to always be entertained and to have fun. So, um, so, so gluttony can kind of come in and just say, oh, you need this, you need to do that, you need, um, you need to have this adventure, you can't kind of stay still, you always want the next best thing, um, kind of some of those um, sins can kind of pop up as you um, kind of always want the next be best thing, and sometimes it's hard to be um, just kind of grateful for where you are at. Uh, the underlying emotion um, that a lot of sevens struggle with is fear, not necessarily fear in doing something or fearful about certain situations, but um, kind of fear that of like the normalcy or a fear of things kind of staying the same or uh, fear of things not changing. Often enthusiasts really love change. They thrive on change and they really want to um, kind of always are looking for something new to do or something uh, new to figure out or learn. And um, they're highly motivated um, just by change in what's new. And then sevens often believe that they must be fun and entertained. So when they think of a situation, they might think, is this gonna be fun? Am I gonna be entertained in this situation? And if I'm not, then maybe it's not as appealing um, for that. And so I think that that's interesting that those are their motivators as they kind of, um, kind of could struggle with if it's not going to be fun or entertaining, then they kind of don't want to do it. Um, and so kind of an example of this, um, in college, my good friend, because enthusiast is my number two, um, but 
my friend, I got a job to be a dishwasher in um, our college like campus dorm um, cafeteria. And I was like, I will do any time, but I only really wanted to do the times in the morning um, or lunchtime. Because I told my friend, as I told one of my friends, um, I can't be working when other people are hanging out. And I think like that was so true of like my college enthusiast self. Like I so badly did not want to be left out. I so badly just wanted to always be where whatever was fun or entertaining. Um, and so I did work, but I only wanted to work at like a certain time. So it's kind of lazy, but, <laughs> but I definitely just kind of shows you where my heart as like an enthusiast was and sometimes can be, um, that you really want everything to be fun and entertaining. And, you know, sometimes you just have to work hard and do something that's not as fun or entertaining. Um, so I hope that kind of gave you a little bit of a snapshot into uh, the enthusiast. And Jason's going to come up and talk about the enthusiast, um, and more of a spiritual formation. All right. Enthusiast. <laughs> Great job, Kristen, talking about the best number on the Enneagram 7, right? No? All right. Jana told us before she left, she said, you know why uh, 6 is afraid of 7, uh, because 7, 8, 9, <laughs> right? Which I happen to thought was a great Enneagram joke. All right, so I had to work it in there somewhere um, just to uh, appease my inner preschool self. So we're talking about sevens today, and I, I am a seven. And so uh, as, as Kristen is talking about some of the um, uh, great things and some of the challenges of sevens, I'm like, relating to that so much because I'm like, yes, that is exactly right. And at the same time, so convicting about some of the, the challenges that, uh, that I know I have personally. And, and the hope is for all of us that as we're going through this, that um, you can become more self-aware of not just um, n not just the, the great things about your life, but also about maybe some of those areas that you've struggled with uh, perhaps all your life and you've wondered why do I struggle with this when someone else when others don't and maybe you're beginning to to see and become self-aware of why you have some of those struggles and hopefully able to see some ways that you can grow uh, in and through those those struggles and challenges that you that you have within your personality type um, of course, Solomon is a great biblical example of a seven. Uh, he is someone that uh, we can find from the word was very spontaneous and adventurous, uh, right? In fact, he's the one who said, there is a time for everything under the sun. Like, so I can, I can see Solomon now. Hey, guys, there's time. We got to get all of this in, and there's a time to do it all, the good and the bad. There's a time to get it all in. Um, and so he had that adventurous type spirit. Uh, but you also see, though he was the wealthiest and the wisest man who had ever lived up to that point, um, that he did have this incredible lust for life. And uh, we see many times his passions play out uh, in some of the highest of highs, but also the lowest of lows that we can find in Scripture. Um, he, was, he was passionate. He was adventurous. But many times, uh, like many sevens, he lacked self-control. Uh, so, so what are some ways that sevens can, uh, can grow and experience spiritual formation in their life? Because as Kristen says, uh, sevens are tempted uh, with gluttony in, in every area of life, right? Not just talking about, about food, but just always wanting more and more and more of whatever adventure or whatever the adrenaline rush is or whatever is exciting in the moment. Uh, well, sevens need to realize that the Spirit of Christ uh, wants to transform uh, that kind of sinful fruit into the fruit of self-control and love and joy and peace in, in, their, in their lives. 
Um, so some things that, that probably come natural to a, to a seven on a spiritual level um, are things like celebration. Like uh, if, you, if you accomplish something great, like you want a seven to be around you in that moment because they are good at celebrating uh, the successes, not just their successes, but the successes of, of others. And they just, uh, um, they, they love to see people um, in, in, enjoy or accomplish any kind of endeavor. And so uh, sevens are great at, at celebration. They're also great at community. Um, sevens are by nature extroverts, um, uh, so they, they're good around people. Um, they, they feel alive when they are, they are surrounded by others, um, and, and they do well with, with community. So that spiritual discipline of community that the Bible calls us to is something that, that comes natural to most, to most sevens. Now, some challenges that, that sevens can have at times are things like solitude. We all know it's important to have uh, moments of, of solitude in our life. Even Jesus, um, who, who had to get away from his disciples at times and just withdraw and have alone time with the Father, um, we see that example in him. But for sevens, that can be that can be challenging because they want to be doing something uh, adventurous, exciting, and many times sharing in that, in that with, with others. Uh, also, uh, things like fasting can be difficult for, for a seven. Um, fasting is, is um, w well, it's sort of the opposite of gluttony, right? And so we learn that the besetting sin of, of uh, a seven is that of gluttony. Uh, well, fasting is a great way uh, for, for sevens to sort of keep that in check. And so not, not just with food, but maybe other kinds of fasting, uh, whether it be social media, whether it be uh, just doing spiritual retreats and, and maybe fasting from the idea of being around people, maybe giving up something. Uh, in life to draw closer to God can be a great discipline and yet a hard discipline for a seven. Um, I know for me, fasting has been one of the hardest of all spiritual disciplines. Uh, when I was a teenager, once I, I was uh, trying to fast for five days uh, with only water. And uh, I get to, to day number three or four and I'm doing, doing pretty good up to that point. But then I, I pass this uh, this carton of Oreos on the top of the refrigerator. And, and they weren't just Oreos, they were double stuff Oreos because I believe the flesh can pass up Oreos. But when it says double stuff on it, double stuff, it, it's just like something calls out to you, right? And so as I'm walking past the refrigerator and see those double stuff Oreos, I think, you know, uh, maybe we can work a deal here, God, you know? And so I, I thought I've been three or four days on this fast up to this point. That's pretty good for a, for a 15, 16 year old kid. Um, I, what I'll do is I'll take an Oreo, I'll chew it up and then I'll spit it out. So I didn't actually consume it. All right. I just, I just chewed it and spit it out. Well, I actually went through the entire carton of Oreos. I mean, it was brand new. I, I chewed up every Oreo and spit them out into the garbage disposal. I, I chewed, but I didn't swallow. Uh, but I knew in my mind, oh man, that was, uh, that was a tough moment. And it, it, fasting is something that uh, I think back to that day very often because every time I try to fast, I realize how difficult it is for me and yet how important it is to me. Uh, because it helps me to crucify that, that flesh uh, that sometimes is so strong. Now, sevens at their, at their worst can be very impulsive, and uh, frankly, they just don't know when to stop. Uh, they act with compulsive actions and can have very erratic mood swings. But at their best, uh, they become awed by the simple wonders of life, and they are joyous and uh, joyous achievers uh, who do many things, who do many things well. 
Uh, now, Kristen gave you the Bible verse for, that is key for, for sevens, and I think it's a, it's a great one to read and to close with. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Now, let's remember uh, John 15 here, all that Jesus had been talking about, right? He'd been talking about all through John 15 about abiding in him abiding in him if you abide in me and I in you right and so Jesus is saying that if you abide in me your joy will always be full and I think especially for a seven this is so important that we remember that our joy isn't built on the next adventure our joy isn't found in the next and best thing that's going on our joy should be and can be found and can be made full in Christ Jesus. And so let's keep him at the center of our lives uh, and we will never, ever lack for joy and adventure. Let me pray with you as we, as we close out today. God, we love you and we thank you so much uh, that you have created us in, in uh, such an amazing way. In fact, your word tells us that we are all fearfully and wonderfully made. And God, I know that for all of us, there's a little bit of seven in some uh, compartment of our life. And uh, we thank you for that adventurous spirit. And, and God, I just pray right now that you would help us all uh, to grow and become that best version of ourselves. Uh, Lord, and that most importantly, for the sevens and for all of us, that our joy would be found complete in you. We love you and we thank you for this in your strong name. Amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you next time.